Hey there, welcome back to Reddit XO, the best channel for Reddit cheating stories. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification for more stories like these. Now, let's get into the video. Cheat on me? You deserve what's coming. This all happened around five years ago. My then wife and I had been married for around three years at that time. She was raised in an extremely strict Christian home. Her parents disliked me because one, I am not religious, and two, I am a Democrat. They did all they could to persuade her not to marry me, but it was futile. In retrospect, I wish they had persuaded her not to marry me. My wife started to withdraw at some point during our marriage. We moved from having three times per week to three times per month to once per month. She informed me that she did much like having and that she just did it to please me. What I didn't realize was that she didn't want to have so much with me since she got her somewhere else. How did I discover this? My wife was using my laptop. Her laptop was being serviced and inadvertently checked the remember me option on her email. When I tried to check my email, it was forwarded to hers. I witnessed every communication she sent to this man, which essentially verified her cheating on me. I filed for divorce just like any sensible person who understands their marriage is finished. I also informed the other man's GF, who swiftly left him. Now, as I previously indicated, her folks were never really fond of me. They were furious when they found out I was divorcing her. She allegedly lied to them, claiming that I cheated on her. Every other week, I received venomous emails from them. After our divorce was finalized, I informed her parents of her infidelity and provided them documentation. Her father emailed me to apologize and express his disappointment in his daughter. I just had one response you now have a better understanding of your daughter's personality. Please do not contact me again. Since then, none of them has contacted me. A year or so after our divorce, I get a lengthy email from my ex with the subject, thanks. I expected it to be some kind of thank you note, but it was far from that. Some of it included things like, thanks for making my parents hate me, thanks for forcing me to cheat on you, and thanks for destroying my life. That was the last I heard from her. Her parents had abandoned her, and she was the laughing stock of the little village where she grew up. According to Facebook, she now resides in Australia, but given that she hasn't posted anything in three years, I may be mistaken. Also, do you recall the girlfriend of the person with whom my wife was cheating on me? That lady is now my fiancé. I'm the winner. Story 2. Cheated on by X years ago and feel like it still affects me today. I'm a 25-year-old man, writing this to maybe get it off my chest. So, in the spring 2015 semester, I met my first girlfriend at university, I was 19, she was 18. I never had a girlfriend before, obviously, and had only had one relationship previously, my first FWB, whom I'd met just a few months prior. I should clarify that I'm autistic and have always struggled with socializing and meeting new people. I met her on Tinder and we got out a few times and had a good time. The third time we went out, things became, but she began weeping since it was impromptu and we didn't have condoms. She was terrified she'd wind up like a friend who had a child and wasn't prepared for it. A few years later, I realized I was infertile and couldn't have children. But in any case, we came to a halt at that time and I'm not sure what occurred today, but we began dating. We had a lot of fun doing things together and having throughout the final couple months of the semester. At the conclusion of the semester, I returned home. My school was in the Los Angeles region, so it wasn't too far away. We had promised not to see anybody else that summer, so we were largely on the same page and had established ourselves as significant others, or so I thought. She ended up with one of her former FWBS that summer. We went together a few times throughout the summer, and that's when she began displaying some of her poisonous characteristics. As someone with autism who had limited experience with women, I was naive and assumed that this is how relationships operate. Back then, she would just withhold in order to get what she desired or to force a change in me. I was glad to be learning more social standards, and although I knew it wasn't the ideal method to learn, I liked her and didn't think much about it. I should also say that I was always jealous of how much more experience she had and that she experienced it in high school. The next semester, we returned to university and more and more toxic circumstances emerged, which I was too ignorant to recognize as poisonous. Most of the arguments we had and other unpleasant events I was furious about I don't recall since my mind has a defensive mechanism that filters my recollection of details for terrible things. I'll recall something that occurred and an emotion I had as a result of it, but I can't remember precisely what happened or sometimes anything at all. 
One thing I recall her doing is making fun of my size. I now know I have an above average size, but I think she was accustomed to BBC. She was African American with some Asian and on Caucasian, and would make compliments on my size, particularly while soft, I'm a grower, not a shower. Anyway, after a time, she began to become more emotionally abusive, and I couldn't recall any particular specifics that raise any worries. So, with my confidence fading and a sense that something was wrong but being too ignorant to know what, I began chatting with other females online. Nothing came from them, but my girlfriend found out and accused me of cheating on her technically. Yes, it's emotional infidelity and broke up with me, but not before beating me. This was the first of many physical abuses she'd inflicted on me. I attempted, like an idiot, to apologize and win her back. We had lunch, and she informed me she had with her FWB over the summer in order to harm me, even though she claimed it wasn't cheating since we weren't legally boyfriend-girlfriend, despite our agreement not to see anyone else. I still wanted her back like an idiot since she had damaged my already poor self-esteem and I feared I'd never find anybody else. Long story short, we were together on and off for another semester, breaking up and getting back together for various reasons, and throughout she was emotionally and physically abusive. She punched me in the at least twice during the relationship and hit me in various other ways at other times. But we were together again during winter break. She was still in her dorm when I returned home. One of her high school pals asked if he might stay with her in her dorm for a while. To her credit, she did ask, and I agreed since I had erroneously trusted her. Though that night I had a feeling something wasn't right because this guy had a reputation in high school for I kid you not taking out his giant and plopping it on other students' tables and no one reported him and he never got in trouble because they were like, oh, that's just his name, that's just how he is. I didn't understand how he never got in trouble, but my girlfriend had told me that previously. I FaceTimed her a few nights later and performed her favorite song on the piano. I didn't think much of it until she began weeping. But when I returned to university the next semester, she informed me that the night that man left, he essentially encouraged her to have with him by saying something like, I cheated on her before, so she may as well with him, or something along those lines. So she had with him, but then she felt bad and urged him to stop. Because of her remorse, she supposedly began weeping on FaceTime at that moment. As an idiot with my shattered self-esteem, I felt I'd never get anybody else and attempted to make it work. I ended things with her about a week afterwards. But I became lonely and let her back into my life for the last time. After a few months, I had had enough and told her in a dispute that I had cheated on her with someone else simply to hurt her, I hadn't, but in my mind it would be the end of the relationship forever, and we broke up for the last time. She then went on Twitter and said derogatory things about me, such as, if anybody wants someone with a little and is eager to be banged, take my ex, among other things. I didn't find out about it until later, and to her credit, she agreed that it was nasty and took it down when I told her it wasn't cool. I subsequently heard that when we split up, she immediately went to another man she met at work a few weeks previously, and they were Facebook official the following day. So she was most likely cheating again. Even though she stated her new partner set the relationship status to that day the next time we spoke, it wasn't posted until much later, I honestly didn't believe her. In any case, I'm pleased I had that connection. Because it taught me a lot about social conventions, pop culture and racial problems as well as how I shouldn't be treated by others. Although it took me a long to grasp how poisonous it was, I just wish it hadn't persisted for about a year and a half of my life on and off. While my self-esteem has improved, it is still affected by her emotional abuse, among other things she did and said. And I still have a strange sensation about being cheated on in relationships. I have the feeling it's going to happen, even though there's no evident cause for it. And a strange part of me nearly gets off by imagining being cheated on and how I would respond. Maybe because I clearly did not respond appropriately to the cheating. I'm not sure.